early voting underway right now for the 2021 election here in Virginia. On November 2nd, Virginians will choose the next governor of the Commonwealth. Let's take a look at who's running. Former Governor Terry McAuliffe is the Democratic candidate. Glenn Youngkin running for the Republican Party. And Princess Blanding is running as part of the Liberation Party. So that last candidate is the focus of Jake Burns' report today. Jake spoke with Princess Blanding about the incident that made headlines across the state and eventually inspired her to launch the Liberation Party of Virginia. Jake? Well, Leland and Bree, Princess Blanding says that third parties in Virginia never get a fair shake. She actually made some headlines last week when she interrupted the final debate between Yunkin and McAuliffe. She says it's because in order for a third party candidate to qualify for a debate where they get a lot of exposure, they have to poll at a certain number, but third parties generally are not included in Virginia polling. Since she will appear on your ballot this fall, we went to find out more about her campaign. It's been busy, but it's definitely worth it. You know? It's been 10 months since Princess Blanding launched her campaign for governor and a new political party. But this date launched all that. My spark started uh, on May 14th, 2018. Blanding's brother, Marcus David Peters, was experiencing a mental health crisis when he was shot and killed by a Richmond police officer. We can't bring Marcus back, but we can at least enact legislation uh, that prioritizes community care and safety. What we're dealing with is politicians who are, 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 are delivering nothing but crumbs, you know? They're making symbolic gestures, such as removing the Robert E. Lee monument, while we still have people who have nowhere to lay their head. Blanding points to the Marcus Alert Bill, which calls for behavioral health experts to respond to crisis calls instead of police, as one example of her frustration. The bill passed by Democrats, Blanding and other activists argue, was a stripped down version. After the unjust murder of George Floyd, I kept saying, it's time for the rise of a strong independent party, right? And we must expand our fights from the streets to the seats of the key elected positions. But in all honesty, I didn't think that I was going to be doing that. Blanding launched the Liberation Party of Virginia and on ballots across the Commonwealth, the abbreviation LP is next to her name. The Liberation Party is here to do just that, to ensure that liberation is a human right, not a privilege for all Virginians. History shows third party candidates typically do not fare well in statewide races. In 2013, Libertarian Robert Sarvis drew 6.5% of the vote more than triple any third party candidate in a Virginia governor's race in the past 50 years. We cannot, we will not continue to play by the rules of the duopoly. Blanding knows those numbers, but points to these instead. It's been decades since more than 50% of registered voters participated in a Virginia gubernatorial election. She argues her campaign speaks to voters who feel left out by the two major parties. And they feel that nobody, nobody's listening and nobody cares. And so it is definitely a breath of fresh air when they see that there is a candidate that is fighting for all of us, for all working class, for all marginalized community members, for all of the oppressed people. An important note for voters logistically before you cast a ballot, the Liberation Party will go by the abbreviation LP. You might be familiar with the Libertarian Party. It's a very different thing, and they have just the abbreviation L, so LP for Liberation Party.